Plate B. Ha. Good. That's a very delicate process, so I had to see for myself. Okay, the original service coaster, no hot water because we have an indirect coil and this is a steam boiler. Initially, I thought the water level was too high because it was a full cycle. I drained it out, didn't do anything. But I noticed when we flip the switch, you know, we light up. So we do have power, but where's our power stopping? Let's take a look inside the low water cutoff first and see what we got. Okay, let's take this off. Right, let's take a couple voltage readings and see what we're dealing with. Let's see. Line voltage, 120 as we thought. Do we have, we have 120 coming from our limit circuit. And zero going down. Interesting. Let's see, let's check our feed. Okay, we got power going over. Shut that right there. Do we have power coming back from? No, we don't have power coming back from here. Why? Okay, there's only one screw underneath, so we're gonna pop this off and we're gonna take a couple voltage readings. Very nice to know that uh, we're grounded. Okay, we got our good ground, and now we're gonna take a look at voltage readings. So, okay, something's going on. Looks like we might be. Ha. Looks like we're stuck on the inside, but you know what? Now that we're running, I'm not just gonna leave it to chance. I wanna double check just to make sure. I'm gonna open the 67 and uh, probably regret it, but it's gotta be done. Now, and take out these two screws. That's two. Oh, gotta remove all these screws. Oh, this is not gonna be fun. What would be even worse is if I gotta go fishing in this bucket if one of the screws falls. Like 20 layers of screws. Water's definitely gonna come pouring out of this one, so. And that's a very delicate process, so. Pull this out. Well, looks okay. But, you know, you know me. I had to see for myself. Yeah, I'm gonna need two hands to put this on, so I'll be right back, guys. Okay, now that I got these four <laughs> screws back on, we could talk about what I did. So I basically took, I'm flipping it over right now, I took the flat end of my screwdriver and I kind of just pried it open and, you know, very gently, of course. Remove the float assembly, you know, just make sure that it's in good shape and there's no mud and stuff bound up in there, which it look clean. So I just like to see it for myself instead of just guessing. I got this plate back on. I'm gonna take the mounting plate for our switch and put that back on. And this is the mounting plate back on. You can't put it on wrong the way that they had it set up. I got nervous with all the screw holes and everything, but once you put on the first plate, kind of makes it impossible to put anything on backwards. And I also remember the fact that this was annoying me, so that this is the proper orientation from it. And in case anyone was curious, this is the disconnect on the back that connects to our float right in here. So this is gonna turn and sit right in there, just like that. It's hard to see, but the little jaw is just over the uh, the float. Put these screws back in. All right, everything's all back together, all nice. Here's the moment of truth. We're gonna go for our switch, and isn't that a thing of beauty? All right, so the most important takeaway from this video, I would say, is. Go through, if you are if you think you have a power problem, go through and confirm it. Check everything you can and find where power stops. Do you have power coming into your switch? Yes. Do you have power coming out of your switch? Yes. And just keep going down the line, find where power stops. That's probably gonna be where your problem is. Because you never know, maybe it isn't a power problem. Let's just say, for example, you know there was too much water in the boiler when I first got here. 
sometimes if there's too much water in the boiler and that water fills up in the riser, then there could be enough water weight pushing down. We know steam boilers run on very low pressure, so if you have one pound of pressure or enough water that creates one pound of pressure pushing down, that's gonna trip your pressure troll. So don't just jump and say, oh, power stopping my pressure troll, it's a bad pressure troll. Just do a big overview, get a good idea of what you're dealing with. Is everything else in good working order too? Or is there a reason why power stopping at my pressure troll? In this case, this was a, a 67 low water cutoff. It doesn't look like any other reason than it might've got stuck with some mud. Once I loosened something up, I noticed that the power kicked on and the boiler started to run. So I knew, you know, that's the problem, but I always want to double check just to make sure. I never want to leave anything to chance and then have to have a call back and come back and, you know, it's an embarrassing overlook something because, you know, I was so focused on what I thought it was. So just keep that in mind. I hope you guys are having a great day. I really appreciate all the support and the views you guys give me. So thank you. I can't thank you enough. And I'll catch you in the next.